Welcome to NPTEL MOOCs course on Machine Learning and Deep Learning, Fundamentals and Applications. In my last class, I discussed the concept of Bayesian decision theory. I explained how to determine the decision surfaces between the classes. So, during that discussion, I considered that the class conditional density follows a Gaussian distribution. And based on this, I have determined the location of the decision boundary. The decision boundary is orthogonal to the weight vector. If I consider the diagonal covariance matrix, the covariance matrix is same for all the classes and I am considering the diagonal covariance matrix. For this case, the decision boundary will be passing through the point x0 and it is orthogonal to the weight vector. The weight vector is nothing but the difference between these two means, one is mu i and another one is mu j. So, that concept I have explained in my last class. The second case is if the covariance matrix is not diagonal, non-diagonal, then what will be the location of the decision boundary? So, that concept I am going to explain today. So, let me start this class. So, how to find the decision boundary between the classes? The condition is the non-diagonal covariance matrix. So, this is a Bayesian decision theory, how to determine the decision surfaces. So, in my last class, I have shown that discriminate function g i x, it is in the form, the weight vector is there, w i is the weight vector and x is the feature vector and I have the bias or threshold. So, this is the weight vector. And this is the bias so this weight vector it is nothing but the inverse of the covariance matrix and the mean of the class omega i and this bias is ln So, we have determined this, uh, if you see my last class, you can see this derivation and for this what we have considered mu i dot x t is equal to x dot mu i transpose. So, this we have considered. So, this is the expression for the discriminate function and after this what I considered the case number 1, case number 1 is that diagonal covariance matrix. The covariance matrix is same for all the classes and is the diagonal covariance matrix. So, corresponding to this, the weight vector we have derived, the weight vector is nothing but the mean of these two classes. We have considered two classes, the class is omega i and another class is omega j two classes we have considered and also we have considered x0, x0 is the point we can determine like this, this is mu i plus mu j minus sigma square So, we have determined x naught like this. So, in my last class also I have shown how to draw the decision boundary. So, suppose this is the feature space. So, suppose it is x 1 and x 2, two dimensional feature space. Now, corresponding to the first class, this is the mean vector and corresponding to the second class, and this is the mean vector mu j. 
after this I have to determine the difference between these two means. So, that is nothing but this is the vector, this vector is mu i minus mu j and that is nothing but the weight vector, that is nothing but the weight vector and after this I considered the point x naught. So, this is suppose x naught. Now, how to draw the decision boundary? The decision boundary I have to draw that should be orthogonal to the weight vector. So, you can see this is orthogonal to the weight vector and it should pass through the point, the point is x naught. So, this is the decision boundary. So, decision boundary uh, how to determine? So, decision boundary is orthogonal to the weight vector. The weight vector is nothing but the difference between two means mu i and mu j and also the decision boundary will pass through the point, the point is x naught. So, this is true for this case, the case is we have the diagonal covariance matrix and covariance matrix is same for all the classes. So, corresponding to this case, we have this decision boundary. Now, let us go to the case number 2. So, in the case number 2, we are considering non-diagonal covariance matrix. Non-diagonal covariance matrix. So, that means in this case we are considering the covariance matrix is same for all the classes. So, it is same for all the classes, but it is not diagonal. In case number 1, we considered that covariance matrix is a diagonal matrix, but in this case we are considering a non-diagonal covariance matrix. So, corresponding to this case, decision surface will be g i j x is equal to w transpose x minus x naught is equal to 0. So, what is the weight vector? The weight vector in this case you can get the inverse of the covariance matrix mu i minus mu j and what is x naught? x naught is equal to 1 by 2 mu i plus mu j minus ln is probability of omega i divided by probability of omega j and mu i minus mu j mu i minus mu j whole square and it is the inverse of the covariance matrix. So, these will be the expression for the weight vector and the vector x naught. Now, in this case, the decision boundary or I can say the decision hyperplane, decision a boundary or hyperplane is no longer orthogonal to the vector. mu i minus mu j. So, you can see in this case that for the non-diagonal covariance matrix, the decision hyperplane is no longer orthogonal to the weight vector, that is actually the weight vector. So, decision boundary will pass through the point, the point is x naught. So, x naught already we have defined, but one difference between the previous case, the case number 1, that decision hyperplane is no longer orthogonal to the vector mu i minus mu j. So, this is for the case number 2. Now, let us consider the classifier, that classifier is called minimum distance classifier and based on this concept, the concept is nothing but the discriminate function. So, how to uh, develop the theory for the minimum distance classifier? So, let us discuss about the minimum distance classifier in the next slide. So, what is the minimum distance classifier? Minimum 
distance classifier minimum distance classifiers. So, we consider equiprobable classes we are considering with same covariance matrix. So, in this case 1 in equation number 1 what we have determined if you remember that is the expression is g i x that is the expression for the discriminate function 1 by 2 x minus mu i transpose and it is plus. So, we have this expression. So, you know this expression in my last class I derived this expression. Now, we are considering equiprobable classes. So, corresponding to this case equiprobable classes with same covariance matrix I can write this expression g i x is equal to simply 1 by 2 x minus mu i transpose and this is a covariance matrix because covariance matrix is same for all the classes x minus mu i. So, we are considering the equiprobable classes. So, this part is not so important. So, we are writing this expression. Now, the first case we are considering this is the first case. Suppose the sigma that is the covariance matrix is a diagonal covariance matrix. If I consider the diagonal covariance matrix diagonal covariance matrix we are considering. So, for a diagonal covariance matrix because for a classification we have to see the maximum discriminate function. So, which one is maximum that which one is the largest discriminate function out of c number of discriminate function we have to determine. So, this maximum g i x the maximum discriminant function means minimum Euclidean distance distance from the respective mean points so this maximum discriminate function means minimum euclidean distance from the respective mean points so what is the euclidean distance so euclidean distance i can write like this de that is the euclidean distance is equal to so here actually i am showing the euclidean norm between x and mu i. So, this is the Euclidean distance. So, maximum discriminate function means the minimum Euclidean distance from the respective mean points. So, if I consider the constant suppose constant d e constant Euclidean distance suppose we are considering that means we will be getting the curves of circles and if I consider the high dimensional case then it will be hypersphere. If I consider the constant Euclidean distance I will be getting the curves of circles and if I consider the high dimensional case then it is the hypersphere. So, this is the case number 1. So, now go to the case number 2. 
the case number two what is the case number two non diagonal non diagonal covariance matrix is this so that means we have to maximize the discriminant function maximizing maximizing z i x is equivalent to minimizing the inverse of the covariance matrix minimizing of this. So, minimizing the discriminant function is equivalent to minimizing the, the inverse of the covariance matrix norm. So, that is actually we have to minimize the Mohalanobis distance. So, Mohalanobis distance you can write. So, already I have defined. So, it is x minus mu i transpose x minus mu i this is 1 by 2. So, now let us consider the constant Mohalanobis distance constant the Mohalanobis distance d m is equal to c. So, corresponding to this I will be getting curves of ellipses and if I consider the high dimensional then I will be getting hyper ellipses. So, for constant Mohalanobis distance I will be getting the curves of ellipse or maybe high dimensional I will be getting hyper ellipsoids. So, these two cases we are considering. So, for maximizing the discriminate function I have to consider minimum Euclidean distance and also the same thing for maximizing the discriminate function g i x I have to minimize the Mohalanobis distance. So, in the first case we have considered the diagonal covariance matrix in the second case we are considering non diagonal covariance matrix. So, these two cases I can show like this. So, what is the meaning of this? So, suppose I have two classes. So, this is the centroid of the first class that is the mean of the first class and these are the contours. So, I am considering some of the contours. So, this is my mu 1 and I am considering another class. So, another class suppose this class. So, this is mu 2, mu 1 and mu 2. So, what is the weight vector? The weight vector is nothing but the difference between these two means. So, this is the difference between these two means I am drawing. That is the weight vector. Now, my decision boundary will be perpendicular or orthogonal to this vector. So, this is my decision boundary. This is the decision boundary. So, these are the contours, these are the contours of equal Euclidean distances. These are the contours of Euclidean distances. So, you can see this is the bisector we are considering and bisector is the decision boundary. So, this bisector is orthogonal to the weight vector. The weight vector is nothing but the difference between the two means mu 1 minus mu 2. Okay. So, these contours if I consider in two dimensional it will be circle otherwise this may be hyper sphere. Similarly, if I consider the Mohalanobis distance
So, suppose this is one class and we are considering some contours. And this is suppose mu 1. And another class we are considering. Another class is So, this is my mu 2. Now, I have to determine the difference between these two means. So, this is the difference between these two means. So, in this case, because we are considering non-diagonal covariance matrix, the decision boundary will not be orthogonal to the weight vector. So, maybe the decision boundary may be something like this. It is not orthogonal. This is the decision boundary. And this is not orthogonal. This is not orthogonal. So, if you see, we are considering these are the contours. These contours, you can see these are the ellipses. In two dimensional, these are the ellipses. So, that means in this case, we are considering equal Mohalanobis distance. These are the contours of equal Mohalanobis distance. So, I can write the contours, contours of equal Mohalanobis distance. So, for two dimensional, it is the contours of the ellipse, and if I consider the high dimensional, then we can consider hyper ellipsoid. Hyper ellipsoid. For high dimensional case, we can consider hyper ellipsoid. So, you can see the pictorial representation of one is the Euclidean distance, another one is the Mahalanobis distance. In the first case, we consider the diagonal covariance matrix, and corresponding to that case, you can see we have the orthogonal vector, that vector that is the decision boundary is orthogonal to the weight vector. In the second case, for the non diagonal covariance matrix, the decision boundary is not orthogonal to the weight vector. So, this is the concept of the minimum distance classifier. So, let us consider one problem on this Mohalanobis distance and the Euclidean distance and how you can do the classification by considering the minimum distance classifier. So, let us move to the next slide. So, suppose this example we are considering. Two classes we are considering and same covariance matrix we are considering for these two classes. The covariance matrix is sigma. So, it is 1.1, suppose 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 1.9. This is the covariance matrix. And corresponding to the first class, the mean is mu 1 and it is 0, 0, and this vector is 0, 0 transpose. Second mean is mu 2, this value is 3, 3 and transpose we are considering. Now, the problem is we have to classify vector, the vector is 1.0 and 2.2 transpose. So, first let us consider the Mohalanobis distance. Mohalanobis distance between the first mean and the Fisher vector, the Fisher vector is suppose x. So, corresponding to this, you can see Mohalanobis distance is this is the expression for the Mohalanobis distance. So, it is nothing but 1.0, 2.2, this will be 0 0.95 minus 0. 1, 5. So, you can check these calculations 0 0.55 and it is 1.0 and 2.2. 2. So,
So, corresponding to this, this value will be 2.952. So, this is the squared Mahalanobis distance is like this. So, this is the distance between mu 1 and x and similarly, we can determine the Mahalanobis distance between mu 2 and x that also you can determine this is minus 2.0 minus 0 0.8 this is 0 0.95 minus 1.5 minus 1.5 0 0.55 So, it is minus 2.0 and minus 0.8. So, corresponding to this, this distance is 3.672. So, you can see these two distances we have calculated and based on this, this input fissure vector is assigned to the class with the mean vector 0, 0 because corresponding to this mean vector, I have the minimum distance. So, I can write the vector x is assigned to the class with mean vector 0, vector is 0, 0 transpose. So, based on this Euclidean distance, we can do the classification. This is the minimum distance classification. So, corresponding to the first mean, your minimum distance is 2.952. Corresponding to the second mean, the distance is 3.672. So, then we have to consider the mean mu 1 that is the 0, 0. So, that the Fisher vector is assigned to the first class. But again, if I consider Suppose again given vector, the vector is the Fisher vector and vector is 1.0, 2.2 transpose is close to the second mean with respect to with respect to Euclidean distance. So, if I consider Euclidean distance, the result will be different. In case of the Euclidean distance, the Fisher vector x is assigned to the second class. But in this problem, we are considering the covariance matrix. So, that is why we have to consider the Mahalanobis distance. So, based on the Mahalanobis distance, we can determine the particular class. So, we can decide. So, that is the concept of the minimum distance classifier. So, this is the fundamental concept of the Bayesian decision theory. So, up till now, we have discussed how to determine the particular decision boundary. So, in this class, I discussed how to determine the location of the decision boundary. I considered two cases. In the first case, I considered a diagonal covariance matrix. The covariance matrix is same for all the classes. And corresponding to this, I have determined the location of the decision boundary. The decision boundary is orthogonal to the weight vector. Weight vector is nothing but the difference between mu i and mu j, the difference between two means and it should pass through the point, the point is x naught. This is corresponding to the case 1. In the case number 2, we considered non-diagonal covariance matrix. In this case, the decision boundary is not orthogonal to the weight vector, but it passes through the point x naught. So, that is the difference between case 1 and case 2. After this, I discussed the concept of minimum distance classifier based on Euclidean distance and also the Mahalanobis distance. So, these concepts are quite important. The concept of the minimum distance classifier, the concept of the Bayesian decision theory and how to determine the decision boundary corresponding to 
the normal distribution. Normal distribution means we are considering that class conditional density follows normal distributions. So, let me stop here today. Thank you. Thank you.